Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our training for clubs on how to get your club out there using social media and other tools so that way you can successfully introduce new members. Tonight, I'm really happy because we have Lisa Raymond with us. Lisa has not only been our public relations manager for two years prior to this year, she also runs her own social media business and is very, very well versed in the authentic advertising that we need. So tonight she's going to talk to us about some really different things. She's going to talk to us about press releases. She's going to talk to us about some other social media tips and tricks. And like I said, she does this for a business. She knows full well what she's talking about. So grab your notes, your pen and paper, get ready to take notes. And any questions, please put them in the chat or the Q&A. And I will be delivering those questions to Lisa at the end of her presentation. So that way we can help you be successful with your clubs. Lisa. Thanks, Karen. Good evening, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us tonight and giving us an hour of your time. We really appreciate it. What we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about some of the aspects of a press release, what we can do with the pitch before the press release, that's something new, how we deliver it to the media, how do we find the media, and what is this thing that's social media, in case you haven't noticed, there's a communication channel about social media, and we're going to discover what we can and can't post on there that's going to help get more attention to our clubs to bring guests in so we can convert them to members. Ready to get started? All right, let's rock this. Here we go. Now this is public relations for clubs. So hopefully everybody's in the right place, but if not, welcome in anyway. Now again, what are we gonna be talking about? We're going to tell the world, we're gonna talk it up. And right now is our Talk It Up Toastmasters membership drive. So that's going on until uh, March 31st. Be sure to pay attention and to try to, just do something to help move the needle one more notch forward to get those members in. We can do this. We can rock this. We're going to talk about brand stewardship and how we can be good protectors of the Toastmasters brand. Public relations and publicity and the difference between ads and publicity. Communication programming and planning. The social media thing, which is my wheelhouse. A business awareness program for the corporate clubs, but there may be some notes in there to take for the community clubs as well, our open clubs. And finally, some social media resources as well as Toastmaster District 3 resources that you can use to help get your clubs moving in the right direction to get those members. With our brand compliance, yeah, there's some rules that they've put down from Toastmasters that they say, here's how we want you to treat our logo, our brand, how you can and can't talk about it what we can do to make sure it's always viewed in a positive light. Now they've uploaded, I think in July this year, they uploaded a brand new brand compliance. It's about 34 pages. That's better than last year's. Last year's was over 60. So they've really tamed it down. And what it does again, tells us what we can and can't do with the logo, with the colors, with the fonts. It's really comprehensive, but it's easy to read through. You can find that over at toastmasters.org under the resource menu tab and then from there the brand portal and that way you can download a copy for yourself. Along with that in the brand portal you'll also find templates, pre-approved images and of course the Toastmasters logo. Those are all available for us to download in the formats that we need. Again the brand manual is there as well. Just go ahead and download that. Share that with your club. Let them know what they can and can't do with things so they can help you get the word out about our clubs and market us in the best light possible. If you have any questions on how to use some of this information, there's always some information on the policy and protocol part of the website at toastmasters.org, covers intellectual property. So again, that way we protect the brand and keep us from getting in trouble as well. If you run to any other questions though, give me an email. I'll put that in the chat a little later or Karen will to help us out. And as always, the best resource that we have for brand is our brand specialist, which you can find on email at brand at toastmasters.org. Alana and I put together a working relationship for about four years now. I know she doesn't run that department herself, but she's my best resource for anything to do with the Toastmasters brand. And she is very happy to help us with any questions that we have. 
when it comes to public relations and publicity, good public relations is the practice of creating, promoting, and maintaining a favorable image of our clubs in this case to the media through the use of a variety of communication channels and tools. Some of those tools will include a calendar, so that way you can tell what you're going to post and when, what message of that post you're putting up, hashtags, any links, things of that nature. It will be listing what channels you're using, what media you're posting it to. So are you emailing it to, say, the Arizona Republic, the Phoenix Business Journal? All of that in a calendar helps keep that real handy and at your fingertips. We'll go through a couple of other tools here in a little bit, but I just wanted to give you some highlights for that. The goal of public relations, again, we want to build and maintain those memberships. We want to make sure we nurture those relationships that we're building with the media. We want to generate media coverage so that way we don't have to take out an ad, and I'll explain that in just a minute. And then finally, we want to make sure we enhance good positive local perception. Did you know we're still the best kept secret in Arizona? Let's blow the lid off of that and tell the world who we are and what we can do to help them, whether they're looking for brushing up their presentation or some leadership development. We are here for personal and professional growth. Now, what I mentioned earlier about paid advertising. So what's the difference between that and free publicity? Well, paid is just that. It comes out of your club's budget. Most of our clubs don't have a budget to just take out an ad and say, hey, come to our meeting and join Toastmasters. So that's why we do a lot of these other measures, like, say, printing out a flyer and taking it to businesses or sending out an invitation to the media itself and saying, hey, just come on over and check out our club. When we do that and we generate enough of that awareness, at one point we can catch the media's attention and they will then send out a reporter and maybe a photographer, or in this case, come join us on our virtual meetings, and do a story about our club. That is the gold we are aiming for. In fact, a friend of mine who moved down to Florida about, I want to say three years ago, Ellen Flannery, some of you may remember who she is, she managed to generate enough awareness and publicity for her club by just being very consistent and persistent with her press releases that they did in fact send out a reporter and a photographer to go interview her club. It was awesome. So if she can do it, I know we all can too. When you're building an effective public relations program, our role is to be the best brand steward and communication liaison between our club and to the media. So we're going to coordinate the communications with the local media. And I'll show you how to find them here in just a quick minute. We are going to contribute, hopefully, to our club's website, or else work with your webmaster on that and give some articles, put some content up there to help get the attention of Bing and Google. And also, if you think about it, try to create some newsletter content. It may be something you put out once a month or even once a quarter, but keep everybody in touch with what's going on with your club, all the good stuff that's there. And I'll show you what you can post there in just a sec. As we serve as that spokesperson, we're thinking, what kind of content could I put up there? Well, with the newsletter or even a social media post, how about the people that are moving through pathways? That's a story. <laughs> you can also talk about people who have earned awards, who won the best speaker award or the best table topics award or even the best poop award, which I think one club was doing for the stinkiest joke or whatever. It was a lot of fun. Really, it was. You could do hybrid meetings. So if you are holding one, let the world know. That way they know they can come to your physical location as long as they obey all the restrictions that may be in place, as well as joining you online. Officer elections. Who are the new officers? Well, we don't know until about May. But once you hold those elections, let the world know. Table topics, the word of the day. There are so many things just when you think about it. We even have a contest for Club Wow. If you don't know what that is, contact Nancy Duckett or the trio and get some more information about Club Wow or visit our website, aztoastmasters.org and do a quick search for Club Wow. We want to define our target audience. We don't want to do a spray and pray where we kind of take a lot of spaghetti and throw it at the wall and then hope it sticks and see what's sticking. We want to make sure we have a strategy in place of what to do. So with our target audience, obviously we want to target the local media. Now, how do we find them? 
I do a Google search and I did one for my club at their physical address over on 91st Avenue and West Bell Road just to find out what news outlets are around in there. And that's who I target. You want to target prospective businesses around in the area and members that are prospective as well, which would be former guests, people that you haven't seen for a while, former members as well. Do a We Want You Back program. Try and build something like that and get their attention and say, hey, we're moving through this. We're doing this stuff here. Get their curiosity going and always make sure, especially on the former members, have a way for them to contact either yourself or your sergeant at arms, whoever is your Zoom master, and get them to know that, hey, if you want to come in, they'll give you the link. Just let them know. Working with the local media. Now, again, how do we find them? Well, we did talk about Google and Bing. And just, you know, let your fingers do the walking. Type in your physical address of your club and see who's there. There's usually a representative for either the Independent or Arizona Central or uh, the Arizona Republic, azcentral.com. You might find out who the representative is near you for the business journal. There also could be another outlet for you, like Times Media down in Tempe and Mesa, where they cover the East Valley. So just do a Google search. You can also use the link at the bottom here for mondotimes.com. I don't think it's a completely free search. I think you get one. But they also have the most up-to-date database that I've seen for making sure that when the reporters move around, and boy, do they move around, <laughs> finding out where they go and where they've landed so they keep those databases up to date. That way you don't have to do all the work. If you do a comprehensive search, there is a charge, but I think for one search, it may be free. And if not, there's always Google. When you find out who those media people are that you're going to be engaging with, ask them how do they want to hear from you and how often? So do you have a younger reporter that wants to hear from you by text or by email? or by social media. So let's figure out what they want to do and how they want you to communicate. Ask them that when you send them information, do they prefer it in an email or how do they want it? And what message would then appeal not just to them, but to their audience? Let them guide you through that. So that way you're crafting the message that not only will get their attention, but the attention of the audience as well. Now, when you're putting together a press release, there are a few things to keep in mind with this. First, and this is a template over at toastmasters.org under the resources menu and in brand portal, you wanna go grab the Toastmasters letterhead. And I believe there is also one or two press release examples there as well. The press release should be typed and formatted. Please don't send in a handwritten note just because you've got a really cool idea and snapped a picture. No, if they have to try and read your handwriting, they're never gonna run it. On top of which, we have to make this easy for the reporters. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Make sure your contact information is in the press release. I used to work for a newspaper for about six years in the West Valley. I'm not going to tell you how many times the reporters would complain that they had a good story that they wanted to follow up on, but they didn't know who to contact. Make sure that your information is on there. Your name, your address, well, not your address, but your name, your email address and your phone number, and which way you prefer to be contacted by email or phone. Always end your press release with three pound signs. Now that's above the number three on the keyboard, or in my field, they're called hashtags. So three of those at the bottom, centered usually, that lets the reporter know you're done with the press release. As you're building this, you're gonna add a heading and a subheading. You need to have a dateline and a lead, which is typically the city and the state, along with today's date. If you're not sure what that would look like, open up any newspaper article or go to azcentral.com and look at one of their articles. I think you get five for free and look at how they start that opening paragraph. And it'll start with the headline, the subheadline if it's appropriate, the dateline and the lead is always in bold. And then they go into the description of the five W's that have to be answered. The who, what, where, when, and why. Once in a while you have the H, which is how, but not very often. Usually it's the five W's you have to cover. If you can get a quote from the person that's do, that you're doing the press release on, like say a speech contestant, for example, that's gold because now you have something that's incredibly transparent and at the same time authoritative and the press loves that. Bullet points make it easy for them to look through the information, almost scanning it rather quickly, 
and then they can digest it. So that way they know they have paragraphs to read, but they can pick out those points rather quickly. Put a call to action on there. Hey, if you're interested in interviewing this contestant or anyone else from our club, please contact me at this address and I will be certain to line up that interview with you. Finally, before you submit your press release, make sure as much as possible that there are no errors. Do your spell check, your grammar check as much as possible. If it's not perfect and they find an error, they're probably not going to point it out and don't sweat over it, but as much as possible, make sure that it's error free and I'll explain why. First, I want to talk about the pitch. Now, this was new to me in the news industry. I didn't really go over it because I worked in the graphics area. A pitch is an idea that you want to about your story and you wanna pitch it basically to the news media. Now I'm not talking baseball and bat, no. What I'm talking about is just a short email that gives them a little bit of a hook and describes what your story will be about. This is sent usually before the press release. This is an invitation usually to a reporter or sometimes a photographer if the reporter is not available for them to come and cover your event, whether it's again, a speech contest, your club elections, whatever you want them to do give a good case as to why they should be interested in this and why their audience may be interested in it. So that way you can get them to come in. For example, you may have a speech contest coming up. We have a few of those going on. So the subject line would read on this example, two Toastmasters advanced to area speech contest. Dear John, results of our Toastmasters ABC clubs speech contest are in and two club members will compete in the area speech contest to qualify for the Toastmasters world champion of public speaking title. Now that's enough to get their attention right away. You've already laid the groundwork of we have a contest, here's the results and what they're gonna do next. That's pretty good. That gets their attention. The next thing you wanna do Set down a first call to action. Be the first to interview them. Now, come on, what reporter is not going to want to scoop everybody else? Really, they're all about that. So make sure you let them know they're going to be the first. Make sure they get to contact you with it. Follow our competition in February and find out whether or not they will advance to the Walnut Division speech contest. See the news release below or email me for more information. I'd be happy to arrange an interview or with the contestant for, or with a public speaking expert and then put your contact information there. Now, the one thing you wanna make sure you don't send to the press unless necessary are attachments. The reason for that is that their email filters may be set way too high and that kicks out some of the attachments. Sometimes if you send a Word document, that will kick it out by itself no matter how high their filters are, are set or even how low. That's because Word documents are notorious for somehow picking up these little viruses and Trojans and all the icky stuff that can really have fun with your computer and just shut it down. They're on their own network, so it could actually damage theirs too. So most of those computers are set to kick those type of emails out. Doesn't matter. I'll show you though what we can do to get around that. And this came from an interview, whoops, sorry. This came from an interview I did with an editor from a newspaper. To make things easier for the reporter, don't send that attachment. You still need to send the photo photos and the logo, anything else that's relevant. But I'll tell you what to do with that press release here just shortly. As we're building this effective public relations program, again, don't send the attachments. You still have to send again the photos and whatnot and the logo. You're going to make a copy as in, go ahead and copy the text of the press release, paste it into the body of the email. This is what that editor told me. When I asked her why, she said, very simple. It lets the reporters go ahead and copy and paste to their format so they can print it quicker. So that way they don't have to type anything. It also avoids that part, which is more important than the other attachments from getting kicked out. Now, when you follow up then with the reporter, either by phone or by email, but if you sent them the email, I'd pick up the phone and call them. Ask them if they got your attachments and tell them how many you sent. If they said no, ask them if you can send them again and to what email address could you send them to? Always keep the Toastmasters brand in mind. 
If necessary, you can tell them what they can and can't do with the logo, but at the same point, make sure that you've got it included so they can run it as a separate file without having to worry about trying to get it out of the press release. I would still send them the press release as a JPEG, so that way they know how it's formatted, but likely just putting it in the body of the email makes it easy for them to copy, paste, it's in the newspaper, bada boom, bada bing, it's done. Is there any questions so far? We do have one question, Lisa. Okay. How often do we need to be sending press releases? Do we need to send them monthly, bi-monthly, weekly, daily? That's a really good question. Part of it depends on your comfort level, but I would send it daily, not because you want to bug the poor reporter to death, but sometimes our information is inaccurate as far as contact information. Sometimes it may get passed off to someone else. Sometimes they may just flat out miss it because they get so many emails in a day. It's a good idea to try and do that persistence, but make sure that you are doing so based on your schedule and what you feel would be appropriate. If you have made contact with that reporter previously, ask them how often they want to hear from you. That was back in our first part of this discussion. So if they tell you, yeah, weekly is fine, send it weekly. If you didn't hear from them, I would send it daily until you get a yes, no, leave me alone, some type of indication that they've heard from you. If you've sent it three or four times, I would say no more than four, and you still haven't heard from them, pick up that phone and give them a call. Does that help you? Wonderful. Thank you. We have another question. Okay. How does this work when it comes down to other kind of media programs, such as radio or television? Does this work the same way? Not necessarily. Uh, TV, it may be another set of frequency, and I would probably do that at least twice a week because I know they get really busy. With radio, they're usually a little bit easier to get a hold of, and they usually respond a little quicker. So that may be an easier road to get into. Uh, business radio, I think is a business radio X with Karen Nowicki, usually she responds within the same day, at least within 24 hours. So if you send her an email about something really hot going on with your club, she will respond very quickly. The other media outlets depends on what the news story cycle is of the day, but I would at least with the TV stations, give them a couple of days in between. And then by the third, when you're ready to send that third email, pick up the phone and just ask for the producer and ask them if they'd seen your other emails previously. And if not, could you send them one with a pitch for a story and what email address should you send that to? Awesome. Thank you so much. That's the questions for now. I will keep monitoring chat and the Q&A box for you. Okay, great. Thanks, Karen. As we're building an effective public relations program, we want to make sure that we keep our members first and foremost in our minds. It starts at the club level, and we want to make sure we start up that slope of the triangle to talk to the media. Now, if we don't include our email and our contact information, they may take that information and contact the district to say, hey, so-and-so from one of your clubs contacted us, but we don't know how to reach them. That then invites the district to do an email exchange with the media and with our club to let them know so-and-so at the media is trying to get a hold of us about our press release. That way we've created that perfect triangle or sometimes circle of communication to let them know that we are complete. We have gone from our club to media, media to district, and we're all working in concert for the same thing, which is to make sure that you get that information from your club to the media and that they know how to reach you back for questions. Now, social media and online marketing. Okay, that's my wheelhouse. <laughs> I've done social media now since 2007. It's a lot of fun. It can be trying. and that's all I'm going to say. It's just like any form of communication. It doesn't matter sometimes how you do it. Sometimes it just gets to be frustrating. But consistent frequency, and I'll talk about that shortly, is the key to any marketing you do, especially online. Is your club online first? Hopefully, first of all, it has a website. If it does, find out who the webmaster is. If it's you, great. If it's not you, great. Find out who's doing the updates and ask them if you can send them updates once in a while and what you're trying to do. You may have to get it past your officers for approval or sometimes the club itself, but that way you're at least updating the information in a timely manner. Make sure that your club's information like their meeting time and day are accurate. Trust me, make sure it's, it's accurate. I Trust me. 
make sure that the way you're meeting right now is accurately displayed on the website. If you have a map that shows your physical location and you're not doing a hybrid yet, I would ask the club if you're okay with taking that map off just to make sure there's no confusion that people might think you're meeting in person instead. Make sure that the description, all the pages, everything up there is as up to date as possible. And make sure it's up to date at toastmasters.org as well. We just had a person come visit our club this week and they caught a hold of us by going to toastmasters.org. Would have been really embarrassing if we hadn't had our information updated. So kudos to our VPPR for keeping that updated. So that's why I always throw that in. Follow the media's social media pages. If your club's on Twitter and the media that you want is on Twitter, go follow them. If they're on Facebook, go follow them. See what they're posting about, what's going on. Start taking an interest in how those posts are forming and what those stories look like. Twitter is still a good place for reporters to get ideas from for stories and press releases. So if your club is on Twitter, you can post your press release on your website as a separate page and then link to it and send it to them in Twitter and see what they do with it. You can also use videos, photos, keywords, and I'll show you how to do that here shortly, and hashtags to get the media's attention and to get out to a broader audience. Now, a hashtag is a word or a series of words that are preceded by the pound sign, which is the sign above the number three. There generally isn't more than three words behind that. I have seen really long ones, but when you're dealing with people either on a computer or these devices, you wanna make sure they don't have to overwork their thumbs and it's super easy to type. So the shorter the better, if that makes sense. For example, one of our hashtags for District 3 is hashtag D3TM. Real easy on the thumbs, real easy on the keyboard. The CF factor is that consistent frequency I just mentioned. So what is that? The frequency is how often you want to communicate, but the consistency should be allocated or allowed by your own schedule. So if you start off guns a-blazing, I'm going to post every day, and then it falters off to like maybe once a month if you get lucky, that's not consistent. I usually coach my clients to start consistent frequency by posting once a day, if they can handle that. If not, at least once a week. You can always build it up, but once you get it at a certain level and you start dropping off, your views between Bing and Google and other search engines will show this, the same thing. They won't be able to find you as easily. So consistent frequency based on your schedule. Does that make sense? Okay. When you're on social media, please, I'm gonna make everybody take a promise here. I promise I am not gonna just post, 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 post. Thank you. When you're posting on social media, be prepared to ask some questions and be prepared to answer some questions. There are people that are very comfortable at messaging pages to find out, hey, what's going on? Be prepared to answer them back. Use captivating images. Now you can use other images that may not be approved by District 3, but may, or by Toastmasters International rather, I'm sorry. But if you do, please make sure the logo is not part of that. We prefer to use the images that Toastmasters has already approved because we don't have any questions about them. And they're pretty darn good as far as that goes. If you have any questions though, make sure you send what you're trying to post to brand at toastmasters.org and let them take a look at it for you. Stay on the brand as much as possible. That way we don't cause any problems with branding for Toastmasters. Because again, this is not our brand. This is what Toastmasters is allowing our clubs to use. So we want to make sure that we treat it with the most, as much respect and courtesy as possible. Share videos. You know, there is a club out there that's recording their table topics and posting it. And they're getting some really good attraction with it. So I would consider sharing videos of that if your club is okay with it. If they are, make sure you go to the brand portal. <laughs> under toastmaster.org and resources, there is a sample media release that's there for us to use. I would also go to aztoastmasters.org and in the search box there, type in media release. We have one there that Don Griffith, our fabulous videographer and past district governor and past international director, <laughs> he's, he's been everywhere. <laughs> he created a terrific 
media release for us to use. That covers the video and the photo. So you want to make sure your club is aware of that, get their signature on it, and that way everything stays together and stays on brand as well and gets their permission as well. Show the followers what? An inside look, like peek behind the curtain of your club. Show them what your club's really all about. Show them the fun. Show them the challenges of a speech, but show them how your club really is. Let them see everything. It's okay. Be consistent as possible. So if you're going to post, say, the word of the day at every club meeting, make sure that goes up on your social pages every week. If you're going to show awards, like, say, for the best table topics person or the best evaluator for speeches, make sure that gets done every week as well. That will give something for people to look forward to and a reason to come back to your pages. Keep those posts simple. You can do some long posts, but sometimes the shorter posts get better traction because again, most people are looking on these devices and they're gonna skim. So if they're gonna skim, keep it short, but then make sure they have a way to contact you in case there's any questions. Share timely content. Again, did you just have someone finish a path and pathways? That's timely. Get that out there. Did one of your members compete in a speech contest and now they're going to the area? That's timely. Get that out there. Don't wait until, like, say, June to say, hey, so-and-so did this back in February. That's stale news and the media won't pay attention to it. Get to know your audience when you're posting. Most of the social platforms have some type of analytics or control dashboard that you can use to look and see what posts are getting views, what posts are getting engagements like likes or hearts if it's Instagram, comments, shares. Those are the gold and the ones that are getting the best traction in those three categories are the ones you want to keep repeating. Not the exact same post, but the same type of post. Does that make sense? Okay. The last thing you can do if you're really brave, because this does, you know, it, it does cause a little bit of flutter in the heart to do this for some people. You can do a quick broadcast live on like live Facebook or on Twitter live, for example, and let people know you're going to start your club meeting in like 30 seconds. This is what you're going to talk about. Here's the featured speakers. And if anybody wants to join us, come give our SAA or whoever the email that you want to join and come on in. Let's take a look at the meeting. That's all it takes. That quick 15 to 30 second burst, let them see what you're going to do and then stop it. Be surprised what kind of traction that's going to get. For the corporate clubs, guys, thank you for hanging with me. I will not leave you guys behind <laughs> if we can help it. You're different. And that's because you have to maintain guidelines from not just your HR departments, but also from the organizations you work for. So first of all, thank you and thank your corporations for allowing us to have clubs there. We totally appreciate their support. What we want to do is create a business awareness program or a BAP to not just tout the benefits, but also to help people know as they're coming in new who you are. So we want to coordinate with your HR department and ask them, can you be part of the new employee onboarding program? If nothing else, just a quick blurb on their onboarding sheets that, hey, we have a Toastmasters club. And they can contact so-and-so for details. Employment fairs. If any of your companies are hiring, they generally will have some type of employment fair. And it might be virtual right now. Ask them if you can have a booth or a virtual booth so that we can tell people who may be looking for employment about Toastmasters. Never know what could happen. If you have a club, you may not necessarily have a website. And that's because the corporation may not allow you to have one through free Toast Host or a self-hosted website. I would ask your HR department if they could give you a page or some mention even on the homepage of their website somewhere on their intranet. So that way the employees can see that there is a club presence and what that club is doing. You can also ask to use intercompany email. Well, for what? Club newsletter, that club newsletter? <laughs> Let people know what's going on, what happened this week or this month and what's gonna come up next week or next month. Flyers, everything you can do, even a social media post, if you were gonna create one, can be put into a JPEG and then you can put that in an email by itself out to the members and to the rest of the employees. They can see what you're doing and what you're about. Like say an open house, for example, invite them through the email system. A special event would be like that open house. You also might do my say an employee appreciation day. 
that would tell them and say what's going on. You might celebrate, hey, Dan Davis got his Pathways DTM. That would be something to celebrate. You want to let all the employees know what's going on. Keeping in touch with members. And that may require a couple of different tools if the employees, or in this case, if the HR department doesn't really give you any leeway. Phone works best at that point. You could do a text message, contact them off, off lunch or off hours, whatever. Make sure that you do that based on what the company will allow you to do and what the employee or your member will have in their schedule. You also may be able to use WhatsApp as a messaging system. Also look at using Yammer, which is a social media system that's inside Microsoft that most companies are using. You may not be aware of it. If not, ask your HR department if you could use that and then ask if that would make sense for your club to take part in that as well. For the corporate clubs, some of the benefits that you can pitch to your HR department about a business awareness program Biggest thing right now, employee retention. There are so many companies that have to let employees go right now. We don't want to see any of our members lose their jobs. So this would help with employee retention by keeping people engaged, improving their leadership and communication skills. Recognition outside our club. If you're volunteering, say at our spring conference or at an upcoming TLI, which is our Toastmasters Leadership Institute, that's great. Let them know what your volunteerism is doing and make sure that you let them know that we at District 3 totally appreciate all your volunteerism and support. Communication development. Well, that's part of professional development as well and let them know you're working on that. Same thing with leadership development. Even if you don't really have an aspiration yet to be the boss, you never know where that path is going to take you. Let them know that you're at least ready maybe to lead a team. But by seeing how you're progressing through pathways, They'll know this and you'll be able to stay in touch with them. So that way, when they feel you're ready, they know you've been trained by the program inside Toastmasters. A community outreach could be in your cards as well. For example, you may be able to put together a youth program by contacting our youth ambassador chair and just put together either a speech craft or an introduction to Toastmasters to that youth group, like a high school. Good place to start. It's never too early. Finally, let them know that you support volunteerism very well. Let them know what you're doing again, how you're doing it, and that way they will in turn hopefully support your efforts as well, but that the company is also in support of it. That's a great message to send to employees, especially right now. They want to know that if they're doing something outside that it will not be something that could be perceived negative, like why aren't you working on our time instead? Let them know I'm volunteering to do X for this organization, which will in turn help this many people. It's as simple as that and it's definitely a benefit. Now, some social media resources. I did promise you that I was gonna go over this, but before I do, I wanna stop and ask Karen if we have any other questions, cause I don't wanna go too fast. Yes, we actually have a specific situation. Okay, fire away. You brought, you brought up me top. So, there is a club that has a meetup page, but it's not being managed by them. The person who did manage it has stepped down from the position and we have no contact. What can we do? You should be able to reach out through meetup and ask if you can take over as the organizer. Now, there's a couple of issues with that. First of all, it depends on how old it is as far as how long ago the organizer stepped away. There may not be a way to do that. If there is, there's usually a cost with it. And we have an answer for that as well. If you can't revive your old page, consider putting your club on the District 3 meetup page. The District 3 team pays for that out of their budget so the clubs don't have to pay the cost. Then once you're on there, you can start discussions, post photos, and announce your meetups to get the attention of people on the outside world who are looking for those events by zip code. That'll help them find your club. Does that help? Yeah. And just a reminder, the D3 meetup page that we have that is paid for our district is for the clubs that are in District 3. That's just because right. we are having a lot of members from all over the world join us, and we love giving you ideas and helping you out. But we do need to clarify which some things are limited and that's just because of a geographical location in our account 
That's true. And so with that, they should contact the public relations manager for District 3 at prm at aztoastmasters.org and make sure that their club does qualify for that as a District 3 club. Thank you. And that right now we're good. So keep going. We're loving this information, Lisa. It's fantastic. Okay, great. Thanks. So the social media resources we have to help make our jobs easier and smarter, not harder. We don't want to make anybody do this so hard and so difficult that they don't want to do it. Here's some things that we can help you with. First of all, Bitly has been around for a very long time. Those URLs that we have for like aztoastmasters.org slash blah, 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 all that real long stuff. Bitly.com will shorten it so it's only a few characters, maybe up to 10 or 12, but it's easier to type in. And that way you can put that in a social post like Twitter who counts their characters. It's also easier to put out, say, in a press release so that way it's a shorter web address and it's easier than for the media to share that out as well. Again, there's the website address for the portal for our branding. So it's toastmasters.org. Then go to the main navigation to resources then brand portal, and there's design elements. Now in the brand portal, I said there's a lot of information, including templates. The design elements have the photos, have the logo, and I believe that's also where the brand manual is at too. Social media today, social media examiner, and I'm gonna throw one more in that I forgot about this morning, smallbiztrends.com are three sources I use to follow social media and some other information about what may be happening in the world of the news media or just what's going on with business. It's three great websites that I've used for over 13 years to keep me in touch with what's going on and what's happening new and hot with the social media world so I can keep my audience very in tune with what's going on as well. Shopify wrote a great blog story or article really about the use of hashtags, but only for Instagram. So if you have a club that's only using Instagram, this blog article is for you. So if you click that in, well, if you go to this <laughs> URL for the, for the article, it'll talk about what Instagram hashtags are hot, what you can use to try and get into that bigger audience. Hashtags aren't really something that you should ignore. We should use you no, know, maybe no more than five at a time. And there are some branded ones from toastmasters.org that we can use too that will help not just with their branding, but to solidify our authority as well. They're searchable terms, whether it's right on the social media page or in Google or Bing. It'll show you the conversation that's going on around that hashtag. That way you can decide if it's appropriate for what you're trying to do and you can see whether or not it's going to be a big fit for the posts that you're trying to create. So I would investigate those as much as possible. To see what toastmasters.org is using, I would follow their pages and then just see what they're putting out for their posts as well. For District 3, we have hashtag D3TM. I've used hashtag all about the members for about four years now. Uh, Social media is a good one to use. We have some that are revolving around specific events like officer elections or TLI. I think D3 TLI I'd used for a while. So just go out to some of the posts either for Toastmasters District 3 or Toastmasters.org and see what the conversation is about. Click each one to see what's being talked about. Also for other hashtag use, best-hashtags.com will show you whether or not the hashtag you want to use, especially if it's not one for Toastmasters or Toastmasters District 3. It'll show you whether or not it's got any good heartbeat to it, whether or not it should be used, and it should show you some snippets of conversations so that way you can decide if it's a good one or one that you should stay away from. Also, this one, don't don't tell Karen. Shh, I promised her I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it because it's so awesome, so shh, don't tell her. If you use answerthepublic.com and say type in Toastmasters or Arizona Toastmasters in the search box that comes up, you will see a ton of questions that will come up that answer the who, what, when, where, and why about that search word or term. I'm not kidding. You can either get it in a wheel graphic or in a line list. And guess what? That gives you content to put posts about or write about. It gives you ideas of what you can do. That's a good 
plugin that, well, not plugin, but a software that Karen has used for a long time in her business. I started using it last year. It has given me content ideas like none other. So definitely answerthepublic.com is a great thing to bookmark in your web browser. Don't tell Karen. Shh. Now, another thing that I ran into as a tool, I've, I've been doing graphic design since 1997. So I've got a long history in it and I use my own tools. Christy Hopper did a great presentation for training on Canva. I ran to this tool before she did the training. I've been using it about four years in the district. As you go up in leadership, you know, people use the tools that they have at their disposal. And my husband challenged me to not use the tools in my trade. He just handicapped me. So I had to find another tool. And this tool is introduced to me by other leaders. Canva.com is a free sign up. It operates within your browser. It can't be any easier than that. It has templates that you can use for printing, like a flyer, or for social media, like a Facebook or Instagram post. And you can print them as either a JPEG or a PDF. So if you make a flyer in this program, download it to a PDF and either email it or take it into your Staples or FedEx office and they'll print it for you. How simple is that? That's pretty cool. And especially for a free program, you can upload your own photos. And if you download the Toastmasters logo, you can upload that and you've always got it at your fingertips. For more information or to see that train that Christy did, and I think she's done two of them now, a beginning and an intermediate one, go to our YouTube channel at Toastmasters District 3 to the playlist and click on the training. And as always, when it comes to me, it's got to have something for the desktop and the mobile. So that's right, with the mobile app, which is the little C there, you can edit on the fly. So you don't have to be stuck in front of your computer to do it. That's why I love this software. It's so cool. Now, some of our own resources for District 3. We have a Facebook group. Most of you know that, but if not, get involved, ask for permission to come into the group. We have a Facebook page to touch base with the media and with people who are looking at trying to become members. We have an Instagram account a Twitter account. We have our YouTube channel, which is getting some really good feedback. We have our meetup account. Please take advantage of that and ask your corporation if you can take advantage of that as well. Your club may be closed, so they may not let you, but if you have an open club that's meeting at a corporation, ask for permission to put your club on the meetup page so that way they don't have to pay for that resource and you can start putting yourself out there to other people looking for clubs. And as usual, we have our events on all kinds of information, even about contests and about elections at aztoastmasters.org. Type something in the search box. If you don't see it, let the trio know that there's something you'd like to see there that you think would be beneficial for all of our members, and they'll do what they can to get that up there. Other social media resources. This was asked of me in one of my other sessions previously. What if I don't want to go to Facebook to post and then go to Twitter and post and they'll go and you get the drill. Most of the social platforms do have their own scheduler built inside them. So you can go directly to the social media, in this case, say Facebook, for example, and create a post and schedule it. So you don't have to worry about do I have to post it at that moment in time. You can also use some of these scheduling tools that I found and one that I worked with, but I didn't list here and I'll tell you why. They usually have a free and a paid model. A couple of them may have a trial period. I would stay away from those because those usually end up being a paid model. But see what works best for you and for your club. Hootsuite, for example, lets you manage three of your channels in a free or a paid environment. Buffer is also both free and paid. TweetDeck works wonderfully for Twitter. It also only works for Twitter, unfortunately. <laughs> Later is another one that I've had a couple of my friends test out for me. They use for about a year now and they like it, but it's only for Instagram, unfortunately, but it helps them get their Instagram posts up in a timely manner. Another one that was recommended to me by one of our members is CinchShare. Now this one has a trial, but it's only $10 a month. So if you have a club that has the ability to pay for that, this might be something worth looking into. The bottom line for promoting our clubs Whose job really is it to do our promotion for our club? Well, we could throw our VPPR under that bus, right? It's not just their job. And if they're doing all this work and posting, 
we should support them by sharing that out. So yeah, it falls down to all of us as members to help get the word out about our clubs. Someone that visits my club, like one of the guys that visited my club this week, came from another club earlier that morning. So you never know where you're going to get guests from. I guarantee you without any promotion, you probably won't get any. So make sure you're posting, answering questions, and engaging your audience. Make sure everyone, as much as possible, whoever has these channels, actually can help you with that as well. So that way they're not doing it by themselves. It's all of our job to do that. It's our job at Toastmasters when we're doing public relations to create, to communicate, but most of all to coordinate that communication, not just with our members, but with that media and to be relentless, but persistent with consistent frequency. Are there any questions at this point? We have a comment that you can post on Instagram and simultaneously on Facebook and Twitter. Absolutely. If you, do you mind if I hand, take this one, Sarah? No, not at all. Uh, Go ahead. Lisa, I am a little tired. I apologize. <laughs> the, you can, if you post on Instagram, it will simultaneously post on Facebook and Twitter, but it, especially on Twitter, it will post as an off base link. So when you click on that tweet, it will actually take you right back to Instagram. And all these networks, there's this little thing that they, they'd like you to stay where you are so they don't promote or don't show links that take you off their page as often as they take, show you ones that stay on your page, which is why it's a good idea to schedule them as native to each platform. It, I mean, makes it a little bit more challenging, but it is, it's just one of those little algorithm hacks when it comes down to social media. That's true. And that goes into another question that came up actually in my last session. How many social channels should we have? I could be a smart aleck and say all of them. No, there's like over 600 of them. No, not all of them. But the ones that you can manage, and I would start with one at a time, probably Facebook first, because it's more community oriented. And it's got 3 billion people. Well, yeah, it still has 3 billion people on there. So you want to make sure you can touch that audience. It sounds really big, but you can also narrow it down again by some of the tips that we've shown you in this presentation tonight. Are there any other questions? I thought someone had raised their hand. I'm not entirely sure. And no other questions? We wish you a great evening and thank you so much for being here tonight. Yep. Thank you for your time, everyone. We really appreciate it.